Are you voting by mail? I don't know. I don't know if I trust the system. <laughs> the terrible. Not that it matters. Not like those other boxes uh, are as trustworthy. Whatever. Let's not pretend like voting okay. even matters at all anyway. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another podcast. That's another podcast um, for another day. Hi, I'm Finn. And I'm Sawyer. And you're listening to Our House A to Z. Welcome back to Our House. Our House A to Z. Look at you getting gotcha. in there with the first line. I like that. Moving we did, in. We did one really fast take, and I told Zach that he talked too loud, so he had to start it again just so I could jump ahead of him. Whoa. Now uh, that's true love. You're so sneaky. <laughs> I am very, very sneaky, sir. You're so sneaky. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky, sir. Well, I hope everybody had a great fall flannel fest Sunday. I know I did. Even if you stayed home, I hope you put your flannel shirt on and... Uh, enjoyed uh, an apple cider donut or something. Yeah, it was good to have some friends from Rhode Island visiting with us. I think that, mm. or I'm not visiting, I guess back with us. Yep. Um, I think that something came out at some point about... The travel ban lifted. The travel ban. I don't, I don't even know where it is right now because we're not in Rhode Island, but we do have a lot of Rhode Islanders that have been nervous about coming because they didn't want to get fined and right. afraid to have their license plates like in the parking lot and they were going to get like a $500 fine tagged onto their car. Wow. Um, so the good news is somebody contacted the state to find out the truth there. I want the truth. And what's and the truth? You can't handle the truth. We have found out that you are allowed to go to your place of worship. Well, there you go. There you go. And Macy's Rhode Islanders, at you the are Swansea free. Mall is your place of worship. So come on back. Bringing you the biggest selection. That's the magic of Macy's. Yeah, come on back. That's good. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's a great update mm-hmm. for everybody who is nervous. What else is new? Well, I don't think there's much else new going on. That's never true. It just feels like fall outside, which I love. <laughs> Put a sweater on, you know. Seeding the seeding the lawn. Yep, doing the lawn. Classic fall things. That's it. Putting air conditioners away, right, Ben? Hey-o. <laughs> <laughs> we gave our air conditioners away. I put some out by the side of the road and it gave really some other ones away. It was a faith move. I like to call it a yeah, faith move because we want to get HVAC in the house, yeah. and so it was kind of like, well, we'll only do this if we don't have the option. We of have no air choice. Conditioners. <laughs> And now we have no air conditioners, so hopefully right. they can fit us in sometime before the sweltering heat of next summer. I think we have some time till then, fortunately. Uh, you think so, but it's going to happen fast. Right now, it's just harder to prioritize air conditioning when it's so cold out. Yeah, but this is when you got to be smart to do it. You mm-hmm. can probably get a good deal, right? So we need a uh, a commercial break in here for one of those like your wife is hot. Call the AC Call quality guy. Quality oil. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's just our people. Okay. Yeah. All right. So for everybody else, happy fall. Yeah. I'll tell you what else has been going on lately. And that is the torture of presidential and vice presidential debates. Mm. Now, a little history here is that my undergrad is in, what is my undergrad in? Pre-law. Pre-law and government. Yeah. I majored in government. Yes. I did a lot of stuff within that during my time at Liberty University. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Okay. Which was awesome. And I loved Jerry Falwell, senior. Senior. <laughs> and just clarifying that. Just clarifying. Yeah. And I really loved it. And now I really hate it. Wow. I just I, okay, so I literally can't stand it. What, what, why did you used to love it and now you don't? I don't know. I guess... I mean, a little bit of me thinks of like Stephen Piva because I feel like I feel like I was just like that, like super passionate and mm. about I politics and Piva. stuff. But I don't know. I think then I guess I felt more like you could make a difference or something. Like oh, I'm really going to make a difference, and we'd like canvas thousands of miles of neighborhoods and make hundreds and hundreds of phone calls and wow. do all of these things. And now I don't know. I think I mean it was also like pre the craziness of social media. Now you're making a difference in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> An eternal way. Yeah. Yeah, that was pre social media. How the world has changed. Right. And, and I politics. think that a lot of that I think of a lot of the disgustingness of it to me now is all social media related. Yeah. But I I don't know. I say that and then I like actually watch the debate with my own eyes and I'm like, Oh wow, this is the best we got, huh? Okay. Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right. Well, I think it's a good reminder, you know, not to uh not to put all your eggs in one basket and a political sense, like 
all your hopes can't be on one person right. or one you know, administration or one right. office. To me, it was uh, everything about this feels like it's intentionally allowed by heaven just to get the eyes and hearts of believers back on a real savior. Right. I think that's so important. And, you know, we're going to talk a lot more about politics in particular um, because the election is coming up. Right. And Which, we, by the way, I think I said in one of our early podcasts that we're never going to talk, talk about politics. So <laughs> we're kind of breaking a rule, but that's what we do here. We break rules. So we don't have to. It's not too late yet. No, nah, we do. I think it's important, honestly, you know, and anytime you want to lead people and you want to do it well, I think you have to be willing to talk about uh, hard topics. You know, I know I have friends who are leaders in different capacities and you know, the way they lead is to say, we're not going to take a public stand on something that could be so divisive. And I get that. I actually get that. And there's a part of me that like wants to respect it too. But I feel like anytime you are responsible to lead, you will be held accountable for the way that you led. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever want to have to stand before the Lord and say, I was afraid to tackle this. I was afraid to go there. I didn't want to offend somebody. I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I didn't want to step on anybody's toes. And so I think it is necessary to to cover yeah, some ground here. Yeah, but it is it is tricky. Like I I do remember you sharing that that line before about not wanting to talk about private issues publicly, like how you felt about something and I I do understand the basis of that. Like I understand that it's not always necessarily because you're like cowering to people or can't stand up for what you believe in, but that as a leader, anytime you like speak out on anything or, I mean, you know how it is. It could be like a Sunday, you'll like slightly reference something and there's like 20 phone calls about mm -hmm. how offended somebody was. And you're like, yeah, but I wasn't even talking about that. Like yeah. that was not, a, you know how Just people like, that, yeah, there's a heightened sensitivity yes. to touchy subjects. Yes, absolutely. And it's people like an misconstrue nerve. stuff. And right. we're saying, please don't do that. So please don't do that. Here are exactly hearts in what we're this. Saying. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean you'll agree with what we have to say. Right. Even Zach and I don't necessarily always agree on everything when it comes to politics or social justice. I, think, I feel or, like we mostly do. I mean, I think it always comes back to the same like heart. It's how it's communicated. Yeah. I think we, we don't always agree on how it's communicated. Right. And that's okay. But I think one of the first really important questions coming up to this election, one of the really important questions that I want to encourage every believer, and again, you may not be a Christian and listening to this, um, probably most of our listener base are believers, like charismatic evangelical believers, and whether you are or aren't, I'm going to address this from a Christian standpoint, and as a Christian, it's important that we know who we're not electing. I think that when it com when coming up on any election or any big decision, you know, I, I think of things from such a big perspective. I always think of like things almost like too big, like too huge. And it's it helps me to start to almost like narrow down process of elimination. Who am I not choosing? Who am I not electing? And doing that a little bit can help you understand what you are electing. Because a, a word like president, you know, for somebody, it's almost like, it's open to interpretation. What is that? What's the significance of that role? Um, and what I want to answer that with is who are you not electing? Number one, you're not electing a pastor. You're not electing a friend. You're not electing a mentor. You're not electing a savior. Those are just a couple things that it's like when you hear people talk about who they're voting for, it almost sounds sometimes like people are voting for something so different than right. the person who sits in the Oval Office. Right. And this is excusable, I feel like, to somebody who's not a believer. Right. Because I think literally they do think they're electing their savior. They, that's right. You know, whether it's one side or the other, and whether they're going to like stop has, guns yes. or they're going to like endorse guns. Like this mm -hmm. is going to be like what's going to save our country. And Correct. I, I understand the thought behind it. But as a Christian, right, we have a savior. Correct. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> and his name is Jesus. <laughs> but even down to, even if you said, Zach, I know where it's not about a savior, blah, blah, blah. I know it's Jesus. But I remember the last election that was coming up and people were talking about the candidates and everybody was really hung up on stuff from President Trump's past. 
And that was a lot of conversation going on in terms of like being a womanizer and owning establishments of questionable repute and, you know, things like that. Yeah, that happens on both sides. I know, but I just remember Christian specifically. Yeah. Again, I'm not even I, I don't interact that much with non-believers, believe it or not. And so almost all of my dialoguing, with the exception of a few neighbors or something, it's it comes down to conversations with believers about presidential candidates. And I was shocked at how many people talked about electing a president as if it was their pastor, as if it was someone who they needed them to be of remarkable moral character. And to me, I'm looking at the presidential, like that situation as like, hey, this isn't even about whether or not that person's a Christian or whether or not they are demonstrating Christian behavior as much as it is what laws are they passing? What what Supreme Court justices are they putting in? Are they people who are going to be making decisions that reflect Christian convictions or are they going to be passing laws and bills and making decisions that are antagonistic to right. believers? Yeah. And I mean, I, I definitely agree with that. It doesn't mean that I necessarily want somebody that's not morally ethical, like running our country. Correct. We but sure, I understand. We, like, I understand the, the point. I understand the point. So let me saying. ask you this question. And we were talking a little bit about this before we went on. But I, I do think it's a question that I would ask everybody. If you had two candidates... Um, and one of them, w as a person, was not a great person. Let's say a terrible person. Let's say they were just doing everything wrong. However, you'd also know that based on their campaign and everything that they stand for, uh, whether or not they're standing themselves, the things they stand up for are everything we believe in as believers. And then you take somebody else who's, you know, their personal code of ethics is great, but they're passing laws and bills that are contrary to Christian standards. Mm -hmm. So which one do you vote for? Would uh, Obviously, we if you had two people and they were both going to stand for Christian things and one is a good person and one's not, then that's not a no-brainer. But if it came down to whether you're choosing the person or the country that that person will build, mm -hmm. the country that my kids are going to grow up in, the country right. that whose laws are now going to have to be upheld by my grandkids. Right. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. The tricky thing here that we're learning is that everybody sees, quote unquote, a great place for their children to grow up in very differently now, even as Christians, unfortunately. I think sure. that there's so much, I don't know, there's just such a different perspective on politics and social justice. And I know Zach and I talked about this a few weeks ago in the cancel culture one, just about how it's so crazy to me that we can all be Christians and just see things so differently mm -hmm. and even pull things out of the Bible so differently. No, it's true. And so I think, again, it's it's important that you're clear on what you believe in. You're, you're clear on what are the non-negotiables in right. Scripture. N not so much where, where are the things. Yeah, sure, there are lots of things that can flex. And, you know, they do, they do vary depending on the culture and, and what line needs to be towed. And, well, if things have gone to this one extreme this way, then, you know, it's important that we get back to the truth, which means going the other way a little bit or whatever. I think that, again, coming back to the fact that you are not electing a savior you are not electing a spouse for yourself. You're not electing. Well, thank a, God. <laughs> you're not. I mean, I've heard people say like, oh, that seems like I'm going to vote for this person. It seems like somebody I could be friends with. Well, you'll never be friends with them. So it doesn't matter. Like that's a that's a stupid reason to vote for somebody. You vote for somebody based on, again, what kind of Supreme Court justices right. are they going to put in? Right. You know, what kind of laws are they going to pass? If they're the worst person in the world, but they're going to pass laws that will shape. That's the thing. In 10 years, 20 years from now, nobody's even going to remember or care that much about right. their moral integrity. God right. will. Right. I know. I remember like three, I think it was like three elections ago. Maybe 12 years. The Bush? 12 years ago. Is it George no. W? No. 12 yeah. years ago? John Kerry. Mm -hmm. John Kerry. Yeah. Did he run against Bush? I don't remember. He did anyway, the first time. Anyway, I remember being at Zion and Zach and I getting into like this argument with somebody based on who they were voting for. And I remember thinking like everybody has all these different platforms that they stand on for why they vote for who and everything else. And I remember this quote about to be pastor trying to like argue why the economy was like the number one platform to uphold as opposed to right to life. Yeah. And that 
like biblically, like I, I mean, I'm all about the economy, obviously, like it's super important. However, so is the value of human life. And how do you like put the economy over the value of human life? Right. Or I, I don't know. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think, I think think anybody can argue any of them, but well, when you, when you think about it again, as believers, everything should come down to eternity for us. And one day we're going to have to stand before the Lord and be held accountable for who we voted for and what the intention was behind it. And I, for one, don't ever want to be the guy that has to stand before Jesus and, and explain the fact to the father that, well, I voted on this person because I thought it would be better for my taxes. Right, exactly. Like, like that's the what? part that like is mind boggling to me. Wow. Like mind boggling to me. And I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm super conservative. I am super conservative. I always have been. And still like when it comes to certain things, like people saying, Oh, it's for because of gun control. I would not vote conservative based on gun, like freedom of <laughs> weapons. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that would just, I, I think it's great. I think everybody should have a right to bear arms. Mm-hmm. But it's politics. But it's politics. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, I agree. And I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a NRA guy. You know, I, I, I'm all for. You like your guns? I, I believe in bearing arms and everything else. <laughs> I like my guns. Um, but, but I think that, again, I, I can't get that thing mingled into what part of this my faith should play. Right. And that part, I think, is we have to go there first. Okay, so what are some so things you, that you would say you would like? Well, okay, so, so for instance, and the reason why this matters is when it comes to the, um, you know, the primaries or whatever, when it comes down to, like, you're, you're voting a candidate for a party, now you can say, okay, let's say there's, like, you know, however many people to pick from. And now you can start to say, okay, this, the, here, here are two people that are, they're both going to support right to life, but one is more, has more of an emphasis on guns and the other one doesn't or whatever. Now your personal preferences can start to come into play, but way before your personal preferences have to be Christian convictions. And again, I'm going to say it again, that in 10 to 20 years, your kids aren't going to care that you voted for somebody based on the fact that they had a questionable moral past before their presidency or whatever. All they're going to care about is that somebody got put in office that passed laws that now are oppressive to them and their religious freedoms or are oppressive to them and whatever else. So I think that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. I mean, I think think religious freedom is a huge thing to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Not that whether or not there was religious freedom, it should will change right. us as Christians. But as citizens, we have the ability to vote. Sometimes I wish we didn't. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, you know what? Somehow Jesus, without the ability to vote, managed to set this perfect example for us in a, this totally oppressive political arena. And so I'm, I feel like sometimes Christians get so distracted by their right to vote that politics becomes an idol. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I just look at true. Christian's social media coming up to an election. It's like you're talking more about presidential candidates than you are about the fact that you're saved and that you have the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess the part that's the part that bothers me. That's so hard for me to like, you know, speaking of speaking of Jerry Falwell um, before he before the election, when I was in college, I remember him like getting up in front of the whatever, 15,000 students that were there at the time and saying to everybody, like, you know, he was the moral majority guy, but oh, yeah. he would say, don't vote. <laughs> what did he say? No, I don't know. What did I, wasn't I tell there. you this before? I, don't, I, don't. I told you this right. Oh, clearly say, it made like, an impact. He would say, don't vote conservative. Don't vote liberal. Vote Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound like you're probably not? Probably not. But I, I was mean, waiting for like a ho ho ho, like no. a Santa kind of thing in there. But <laughs> but that really stuck with me. The vote Christian, vote Christian, because so many times we can like idolize our political position, right? That it takes a back seat to our Christianity, right? And so let's talk about this now. So let's just assume everybody is saying, okay, I am voting Christian. Okay. So now how can you as a Christian still exist on both sides of the aisle? Where do the convictions still enter in as either a liberal or conservative? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody kind of reads things through their own. What's it called? 
perspective. Their own like perspective, lens, their, their own lens. That's what filter. I was thinking. Oh my gosh, it's our last name. It didn't even come to me. <laughs> <laughs> their own lens. Like everybody sees things with a different lens based on like their upbringing and sure. their economic status and social yeah. status and all of those things. I was play, having a conversation with uh, somebody a while back and it was... It was somebody who had moved to the United States from a foreign country with a little girl, and she was, like, going off on President Trump. And what was so crazy is until her daughter's green card became the topic in question— she always was conservative, 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 hyper, hyper conservative, hyper Israel supporter, you know, all about Republican mm -hmm. stuff. And then all of a sudden, because her daughter wasn't eligible for something because she didn't have her green card or something. Now, all of a sudden, Trump was the devil. And it was like, oh, you know, she may have to, she may be deported and yada, yada, yada. And so she projected it at me. And I was like, honestly, like, I'm pretty sure that until your personal situation became the hot topic, like, you know, that if you were in your home country and these two candidates were there, you would vote for the one who supported everything you believe in. It's just because of the green card situation that now this person is your enemy. And I I, I was just thinking, like, again, here's a spirit-filled Christian who should know better than to make whatever's inconvenient for you right. right now, whether it's the economy or whether it's immigration laws or whatever it is. You're not just vote. You're not voting based on your Christian convictions right now. You're talking about something right. that you're here illegally, right? And you need justice for it. Right. You need, I, or rather, you need to justify no, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's a great political platform that a lot of Christians vote on the immigration stuff and yeah, so let's the, talk about the that. wall. Build a wall or don't build a wall. Like what kind of person would leave people out in the in the dust like Jesus would never do that. This one has been hard for me. This is one that Zach and I can kind of see two different sides for. I can see both sides of, but mm -hmm. is still like hard. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard for me. It is. And I I guess because I'm a rule follower. So they like even anything tagged with the word illegal, like in the beginning of it, whether it's an immigrant yeah. or not, it's like illegal. It must be bad. So is that just so ingrained in my head that like now, see, I don't have that problem at all. Yeah. Like I don't have any and there's nothing in it's me nice. that's like illegal, like matters that much. I just feel like any good leader is going to be responsible to make decisions based on the well-being of the ones he's responsible for. Right. And, and I can see, I totally see that. And I totally agree with you. But then I also see caring for the orphans and mm -hmm. caring for the aliens. And yeah. I, and those are all biblical principles. Yeah. And, and, and so and, how do you just like shut people out of your country? And well, here's the, here's the other thing. Like, we're not talking about two candidates that have polar views. Polar views would be. One is, okay, let anybody in who wants to come in and we'll send them to college for free and they can live off of our systems for free and they qualify wait, wait, wait. for just all while, of our just stuff. Just while you're saying that, I just have to clarify the free word. Yep. That there's nothing free. Every time you hear somebody say free college, free anything, free, free food, somebody pays for it and it's usually yep. you. Just throwing that out there. Your families and your children and the children and the children. I know. I think one of the vice presidential candidates said, and you should go to college for free. Like anybody should, they should be able to go to college for free if it's a state school. I'm like, nothing is free. So, yeah, right. so your, your state taxes are just going to go up. So your child can go to school for free. Right. But, uh, okay. but that doesn't matter to people who don't pay taxes. Right. So think about it mm -hmm. anyway. So the, but the point is, is that Let's say you have somebody who just says totally wide open borders. Anybody can come in and bring anything with them, whatever. Now, the uh, the polar opposite of that, which I think is unbiblical and ungodly, is a total polar approach that says no one can come in. No one can move here from other countries. You have to be a billionaire to come in and to you know become a citizen here or whatever. But that's not actually the case. Thousands of people every day come into our country. Hundreds of people every day move here from other countries, mm -hmm. and they do it legally. So that means that there is a legal way to 
come into the United States and become a tax-paying citizen who is a contributor to society. I think that's important to understand. We can't just go off on some high horse that like, well, this person won't let anybody in or this person will let everybody in. No, everything there is like there's a bigger gray area than that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I told I And if I there agree. is a legal way to come in and there is a way, there are refugees who come into our country all the time and are taken care of mm -hmm. and are given safe havens and are taken care of beyond what many countries offer. So I can't quite get on board with, even though I do think that immigration is, there is a Christian perspective there that requires us to say, no, we do need to care about less fortunate people from other countries. Right. And do you think the United States like politically does a good job at that? Mike, yeah, I think we offer more aid and help to countries around the world than almost anybody else. For a while, we were the leader. I don't know what other countries are doing now, but no one was offering more aid to third world countries, to countries hit by natural disasters, to war-torn countries, mm -hmm. to poverty-stricken, starvation-stricken countries than the U.S. So again, you can't just narrowly say somebody doesn't care or this administration doesn't care about any less fortunate people or whatever when all of that is happening. Right. It may not be happening the way you think it should, right. but you can't rule out the fact that it's happening. Yeah. Okay. So what about the pro-life thing? I mean, how... No, that's kind of an easy target. I, it is an easy target, except I don't know. Like, how how can you... I don't want to say, because I know that there are Christians out there that would vote, that are voting, and even friends of mine that are voting liberal because they agree with a lot of things on that side, which is their prerogative. But how do you do it and be okay with abortion? I don't know. I guess the same way that you vote for Trump and be okay with somebody have, owning a strip club or something, right? You, you somehow, it doesn't really seem like the same thing to me, but I get it. I get what you're the saying. Same thing. It's not the same thing, but that's the argument. I'm just regurgitating the argument right. that I've heard like, oh, how can you? Well, again, I don't see Trump, you know, passing laws or pushing bills that are endorsing womanizing or adultery or supporting polygamy or anything like that. And that's my point is, you know, which I, we're supposed to be, uh, I think, on opposite sides here talking, but I agree with you. We're I, not there, necessarily on opposite sides. I just, I mean, I I'm want our saying, poor I, audience to know what your life is actually like with my constant questions. Well, and no, like I, playing I, the devil's I, advocate because I feel like I need to because sometimes mm -hmm. I get so overwhelmed with everybody's feelings about everything. And yeah, and so I feel like again, it has it has to do with what laws are going to be passed. Yeah, but I mean, even with that, it's like somebody would just argue the fact that yes, like human life is super important. What about all the lives of people that are already alive and how they're being taken care of? And so the, that's like the opposite side, like the argument for that, I guess. Yeah. I'm but, sure somebody's going to give me lots of, well, lots of I, reasons why it's okay, which is fine. I, yeah. I feel like the nation that we live in, this still is a nation that's full of opportunities for better or for worse. And I feel like anybody who's willing to come here and work hard has a better chance at living a great life in terms of not spiritually, of course, mm -hmm. but has a better chance in terms of just like providing and welfare and that sort yeah. of thing than anywhere else. Right. But again, even that back to the economy, you know, because I think economy does have to do with the quality of life. Mm -hmm. The economy is, I believe in a biblical economy that says, Hey, if you don't work, you're going to starve. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, in Proverbs, like you don't work, you're going to starve, you know, and I think that there's a place for disability and there's a place for yeah. taking care of people who who literally can't work. Right. But I think our systems are so far from that. What Christians have done now is they've tried to create a political structure that will compensate where the church has failed. Are and you saying Christians or you're saying our Christians, Christians, okay. Christians, because the world shouldn't know any better and the world can't be held accountable for Christian standards. But where we have failed as believers, now we we want to say, oh, like the government should fix it. Now. The government should fix it or right. the government should take care of these people or the government should take care of widows and orphans. No, they shouldn't. The church should take care of widows and orphans. Right. And there it is again. You're trying to elect a pastor or a spiritual leader is mm -hmm. really the right way. Mm -hmm. You're trying to elect a spiritual leader instead of just somebody who's going to make the government the best that they can. The government was never intended to take care of widows and orphans. That was always the job of the believer. Right. It's good. So just to close up today, I think we should talk a little bit about 
as believers, how do we communicate about politics? Something that's so flammable. Right. What I was thinking is if we just encouraged everybody to be really like hateful and angry on social media and like blast anything that you really don't care for was really the best, <laughs> I thought, the best way to do it. Like, you know, if you don't like Trump, you let everybody know. Mm. Like, I feel like that's like the really like the best way. You don't like Cam- Cam- Camilla? Camilla? I don't know. Kamala? <laughs> it Paris? doesn't matter. Let everybody know that. Right. And like point out everything that's wrong with her and blast it on social media. Mm, that's really going to be helpful. Yeah. That's, I feel that's like Jesus, be, I feel like Jesus loves that. It's going to be kingdom building. Yeah. For sure. So that's really what we're <laughs> going to encourage here. Yes. Because that makes sense. We should just start Christians. doing, we should start doing these whole podcasts just as sarcastic as we can. <laughs> so there's something so satisfying about it. <laughs> Um, no, but to Ashley's point, I wasn't point, being sarcastic. To Ashley's point, it is so true that, like, you have to think of how ridiculous that is. Like, we are no better than the world when we are somehow nearly entirely respectless and honorless in our communication. Right. Like you're gonna vote for who you're gonna vote for, right? Nobody's changing. <laughs> Nobody's yeah, we're, changing we're, we're not. We're not even having this podcast to even try that. I mean, if it, hopefully it helps, and hopefully you know, I, I I love hearing things that make me think about things differently right. than I always have. But I hate hearing things that are the same thing that I've heard a million times. So I don't want to just be another thing you hear a million times and you're gonna go vote the same way. Whatever. The point is, how can we still be Christians? Like you go vote if you feel like you need to vote Republican or you need to vote Democrat based on your the Holy Spirit inside of you and based on protecting the country for that your kids are going to grow up in and based on, you know, the laws that are going to be passed and all that kind of stuff. You go vote how you need to vote for. But how without deleting all of your social media accounts, which maybe that's really the right way to go. But how in the world are we going to still be Christians and talk about this? Right. Any ideas? I don't know. I'm. You have to know. I'm not the great person to look at. You're because, the one. It's no, all because on you, part babe. of me. I mean, I'm not even like a pacifist or like a peace. You know, really like try to a person that keeps the peace. You know, but I don't want to say I'm not a peacemaker because blessed are the peacemakers. But mm. <laughs> but I'm not intentionally a peacekeeper. I guess. However, I just I end up just staying out of it, like on social media. I don't know. Yeah. Just it's easier just to like stay out of it. Like I really don't like hateful anything. So if you've noticed that I've like deleted your social media account at some point, it's usually because either you post too many pictures of yourself or <laughs> or because I already you know. It's fine. Because we already know what you look like. No, that's not why, because I'm sure you're beautiful. <laughs> I think so. I just I feel like if it wasn't that, it's usually because you're like hateful towards people and even if it's a politician, I just don't like it. It's yeah. just like cringy to me so yeah i think it's cringy to the so i don't know the answer i don't know how you like i mean have conversations with people if you want to have conversations with people yeah and look at this i mean between the race riots and the covid this year it's like satan has had an absolute field day dividing christians right so here's the thing we can be divided on who we're going to vote for yep but how can we not be divided in how we talk about it right Is there a way that we can share our convictions? And what if what if it was meant to be that Christians all have different convictions and different views and that the couple of actually, truly, spiritually significant planks in these two different campaigns, maybe they're just meant to be helped to swing the country back towards the middle every time, back towards truth, back towards reality of what God wants. But but why do we have to be so hateful? Why do we have to be so divided over that? Why can't we just say, you know what? I get it that you have those convictions because of the spirit in you. And I have these convictions because of the spirit in me. And so, hey, whoever gets the most votes, that's who's going to win. Right. And it's not going to send me into depression. Right. It's not going to make me leave my faith community yep. because this person did this and this person has a sticker on their bumper about yep. this name. None of that stuff. None of that stuff should matter. Right. What matters is eternal 
eternal things. Yeah, I mean, I think the fact that we can just so quickly get caught up in it, like you just said, no matter who the president of the United States is, it does not change who God is. Like, it doesn't change because guess so what? You do live are. in the United States, but other people live in China and places in Africa and all over. And their life and joy and everything else can't be contingent on who their dictator is. Correct. Or their president or their right. king, you know? Right. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, so with that, there's a lot going on. You know what? Just pray. Just pray. Ooh, pray. Pray, pray before you oh. go in and vote. Pray in your little like uh, your little election um, cubicle thing there. <laughs> Just pray. I did that with the local elections because I don't yeah. even keep that good a track of who's running for what. And I'm like, you know what, Lord? Just lead me in this. <laughs> lead me in this. God, who do you want in these offices? And pursue it that way. Because we're not voting by mail, right? Is that the reason? <laughs> You're going to pray inside your box because you're not voting by mail. I don't know. I don't know. Are you voting by mail? I don't know. I don't know if I trust the system. <laughs> the terrible. Not that it matters. Not like those other boxes uh, are as trustworthy. Whatever. Let's not pretend like voting okay. even matters at all anyway. I know. Oh <laughs> <laughs> and that's another podcast. That's another podcast um, for another day. Yeah. But anyway, if you never want to hear us talk about politics ever again, give us a topic that you want to hear about and then you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Or just wait four years and then don't listen to that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Because we'll probably talk about it again. The anyway, next if you do have any um, topics that you want to talk about, you can email those to info at hpc.church. Info at hpc.church. All right. Well, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. And we thank you, God, for the season that uh, we are in. We thank you for the country that we're in. And Lord, um, while we don't want to make it a God and we don't want to make it an idol, and we know that one day every nation but the nation of your people will pass away, God, we pray that in the meantime, in the days and weeks and months and years uh, leading up to those moments of eternity, God, that we would just be faithful as citizens of this country. Lord, we do live here and we are grateful for that. And we want to be responsible with that citizenship and responsible with uh, the spirit that's within us. And so, Father, we pray that we would be led by your Holy Spirit in this election, that we would be led, Lord, not by our political views, but that we would be led by what we know is true and what we hold dear in our hearts as the word, uh, the living word of Jesus Christ. And so we just pray, Father, that that would be king in these moments, Lord, as we make these decisions and as we scribble little bubbles and little ballots, God, that it would be uh, reflective, not of our political persuasions or party affiliations, but that it would simply be an overflow of the truth that you have instilled in us. So uh, we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Go vote Christian. <laughs> I fear you're underestimating the sneakiness, sir. This is Messer. And I'm Willa. This is our house from A to Z. Thanks for coming over.